Welcome to another episode of Rider Cam TV, and today we're going to just talk about our helmets. And as you probably noticed, we are wearing white motorbike helmets. They're basically look the same, but with one fundamental difference. Yours is a Kberg Duke, and mine is a Kberg Tormax, and you can tell that because it's got the visor on the top, which you can probably see right there. And mine is visor without. Cracking little helmets, mind. Uh, you can spend five, six hundred quid for a helmet, which I think is, you know, what a lot of people like to spend on a helmet. But the Kberg, Tormax and the Duke actually beat some of the bigger helmets in the safety tests. And it's up there with the best. It's in the top four or five, I believe. Uh, and for 160 quid or thereabouts, you know, that makes this almost a disposable helmet. And I know that for a fact because um, I was on a tour last year, a little kid knocked my helmet off my bag and it cracked unfortunately. Um, just as a, as a safety feature for myself, I didn't really think I should leave it as it was and I replaced it with one of these. So I've had two helmets for less than the price of an expensive one and they're really good helmets. Now I usually ride with a Shuey Multitech and that was 460 pounds. And although a very expensive helmet, the difference between that and this one is I found this one is a little bit noisier. Um, the Shuey certainly fits my head better, but this is a really, really good, well-priced hel helmet, and I do find it really comfortable. Yeah, and also one of this, uh, one of the features about this helmet is people like to ride flip-top helmets with, their, with them flipped up. I personally don't, but this is one of the few helmets on the market currently that has a guaranteed um, P and J rated uh, fixing. So. Um, a lot of the helmets you see with people riding with them up actually don't, but this one actually has a lock, so it means it's legal to ride with like that. And it, and it does really lock it, doesn't it? The lock is literally there, so I've opened it and I can push it forward, although it's a bit sticky, and it will not let you do anything with it, will it? No. It's just literally locked in. And just to open it again, you just pull it back till it clicks, and it shuts. So the fundamental difference between these helmets, the Duke and the Duke Tormax. 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 Kberg Tormax. Oh. Yours is a Kberg Duke, mate. Oh, I knew that, I was just testing it. Yeah. So the fundamental difference is that Mark's got a peak on his, and you can see there's no peak on mine. And because we very rarely get sun in Cornwall, <laughs> we do get it in other places, but we very rarely get it in Cornwall, but when we do, you do need some sort of sunshade. And do you find that any good? Uh, the actual visor itself. No, this bit here. The, the, the sunshade. Yeah, I do. And the reason I got it is if you're riding in low winter sun, you, can't, you quite often find yourself with that when you haven't got the visor trying to tilt your head down just to get that little bit of uh, sun out of your eyes. This takes that, that need to do that out, out of it. And I find it much, uh, much more comfortable, if you want, to, to do that. Now, I did read some reviews about this helmet. And people were saying, oh, the visor oscillates with speed. But you have to ask yourself, if you're riding with a helmet like this, what sort of speeds are you thinking you're going to do it? Personally, I'm, I'm riding a GS Adventure. I don't expect to be doing 150 miles an hour. And if I was doing 150 miles an hour, I'd expect the visor to oscillate or probably be ripped off. But um, they aren't about it oscillating like that. I have they? no idea because, you know, I've driven it, you know, above the legal speed limit, apparently. And... Um, I don't find any difference with it at all. People say it's going to pull your hair, your head back when it gets wind underneath it, but I haven't found that at all. So, you know, horses for courses, eh? And everyone's different. Mm. Now what vents, it's got a vent, because they're exactly the same, so we'll look at marks. And you've got a vent on the top, haven't you, just there? Yep. And that just opens and closes and sets some of the air going inside through the front, across the top of your head and out the back, doesn't it? Yeah. And the problem is, and you stitched me up there, because you don't know whether it says <laughs> open or close and which one it is. So I've got mine set with the word open there, so I'm assuming that that means it's open. But we've yet to find out, because sometimes you just cut out, in you? No. But it's a really nice helmet. It's very comfortable. Um, the visor does The sun visor inside does everything it's supposed to do. And it's quite a dark one actually, so you can, um, yeah, you know, it's very good in, in direct sunlight. And uh, so you ride with yours down all the time, don't you? Or yeah, most I ride of the time. It. Whereas mm. I, I tend to ride with it just there, so it gives the effect that I presume that your peak would have. 
because I just bring it down rather than bring it right across my eyes, I bring it down just so it casts the shadow across my eyes. Oh, look, weirdo. I hey. bring it, <laughs> I'll live with that. <laughs> I use it all the way down. So, but, uh, but you know, there's no difference really between the two helmets, they're exactly the same helmet. All it is is one's got a visor on it, and I'm sure if you're industrious enough and, and capable enough, if you were to just buy a visor and take this screw out here, you could probably fit one to a, a K-Berg um, Duke anyway. Mm. But um, How does it, which, because the connection for the sun visor, that's on the top on this helmet, isn't it? Yep. Because on my Shui, I've got like a slider here that works. And I do find that for me, having got used to the Shui, that it's a bit awkward having to slide that slider up and down to... Boy, you have to shut it higher. Well, yeah, I've got to kind of reach over this massive head of mine. That your head. <laughs> it's massive. And then it's a really fluid movement. I don't know whether you can see that on the camera. Really fluid movement. And it really clicks in there, doesn't it? Yeah. There you go. So that's our little review, I guess. Yeah. And the final part is um, on one of our other um, videos, we showed you how to fit the um, beautiful the comm system. Comm system. And that is Interphone Cellular Tor. Okay, and this is uh, an Interphone FM F5 MC. I'm going to giggle up some. F5MC. Okay, which unfortunately I think might be broken at the moment. But uh, just to show you the difference, they fit in exactly the same way and they're pretty good machines. Yeah, they're really good. And some of you might see um, when you're watching this video that Mark and I both sport these really colourful stickers and they were provided by a company for us because we both volunteer for a charity that rides bikes and they're literally paramedic labels and hopefully that'll see and you've put your details in there a must for any rider especially in this country but certainly if you're a riding abroad so that people can get emergency treatment to you straight away yeah I think on one of our next uh, other videos we can talk about uh, safety features and uh, ID and next of kin and that kind of stuff, I think it's quite important. I think we'll do that. So it's me being serious. Well, I, th I yeah. think we'll do that, that would be really good. So if there's anything you want to know about safety features on a bike, when you're out and about, next to kin, all that good jazz, then leave a comment down in the description, give us a like and a thumbs up because it really helps us. And thanks for watching another video.